So we walk inside, first let me just show you what it looks like, if I turn around completely, there you can see the uniforms. So I think we should just close the door a little bit so you can have a better look at all the stuff. So let's start in this corner. Um, here we have a leather jacket that I bought in a store. Uh, for just 20 euros. It's it's a period jacket and 20 euros is Nothing for a leather jacket. So very very nice. Here we have a visor cap crusher cap This one is a replica Obviously, I would not hang an original visor cap like that on the door because then moths would eat on it and stuff like that and we don't want that to happen because caps like this are thousands and thousands of euros so we don't want that to happen so to the left we have some relics and uh, just to be clear i have a lot more relics but i just cannot display it all i have it in boxes and stuff like that because you know some relics are very very interesting but they're just not pretty enough to display and for people who come here and they just see some rusty things laying on a the table, they're like, oh, that looks like trash, you know? And for me, it's something really interesting, but that's, you know, you, you have to display the things that look pretty and the rest you just have to keep safe. But yeah, these are some of the relics that I found over the years. Dog tags, uh, fork spoons, um, canteen cups. Uh, here we have some interesting awards. We have some jump wings, lieutenant bars, first and second lieutenant. Uh, cross from a chaplain and a little regiment pin and lots and lots more right here as well that right there is an SS bayonet it's actually marked SS I was really shocked when I found that one I have a video about that so be sure to check it out if you haven't seen that one already um, we have that little tin right there which was found at a location where German soldiers were killed has a piece of hair inside of it uh, it's from a soldier's wife or a girlfriend very sad find and we go lower, we have more buckles, we have goggles right there, you know, just a lot of stuff. Stripper clips, toothbrush, more little buckles, just a lot of things to talk about. Right here we have some shell casings, bullets, and some Liberty beer, which is obviously expired right now. We have this frame, it's from someone that we adopted. This is more like the Canadian British corner, uh, by the way, this is pretty funny, look at this. <laughs> The fewer, the better. Pretty cool. We can do it. Very famous. Uh, British spike bayonet. British lantern. Another lantern right there. These are things that you can find on flea markets now and then. Uh, we have a jacket right here. Desert rats. Turtle helmet, which is signed by Doug. Awesome, awesome veteran. Still alive to this day. We have two original radios, some patches, turtle helmet, uh, food powder belts and right there we have more belts some backpacks and stuff gas mask bag uh this one this one actually comes from my grandpa nicely marked 1944 came with this scabbard it was laying around in his shed so lucky me another spike bayonet gas mask um compass we have this spool which is for wires more backpacks belt obviously some brody helmets very iconic model really like these helmets here we have some Finnish stuff that I got from an awesome person in the fan mail some more bullets shell casings German gas mask canisters yeah these crates are just filled with liners relics and stuff like that as you can see this is just full these are v1 rocket parts and plane parts and things like that we have some Adrian helmets right here this one is actually World War one because you can see it's made from more separate pieces the World War II ones are not they're made from one piece so these are all world war ii this one is world war one I. I managed to get these helmets for like 
10 euros each. So of course I couldn't say no. Right next to that, we have this amazing British helmet and this lamp. This helmet and this lamp come from the same place. These two are actually market garden veterans. So there was a barn there and the Germans used that barn as a field hospital. And this lamp was there in the operating room. And later when the Germans left, the British came there and this helmet was left behind. And um, yeah, so these two both come from the same place. Um, and I got these two items for free from an awesome person who wanted to give them to me. And um, yeah, it's just amazing to think that this comes from Market Garden. This was actually there. Two very interesting pieces of history from a very, very famous place. Let's of course not forget about the MG34 that is standing right here. This is an original German World War II MG34. And I absolutely love this machine gun. Um, well, as you can see, it's in great condition. And something that I really like about this one is that it has a field repair right there. At some point, the wood was damaged right there and they decided to repair it with a piece from a shell casing. So that makes it even more awesome. An original German World War II MG34 repaired in the field with a piece from a shell casing. You can still open it up. Just a beautiful, beautiful machine gun and has a drum magazine on it right now. Right here we have some period ammo as well. These are all deactivated. This is the later war steel version and they are very hard to find. These rounds go for like three, four euros each sometimes. And can you imagine? There's a lot of them. Here we have two flare guns. Here we have a German World War II flare gun. As you can see, it has the tiny markings, eagle and swastika right there on the right. Very small. What I like about this one is that it's completely worn. It should be this color, but it's completely silver. It's made from aluminum, still in working condition. But yeah, very nice World War II German flare gun. Here we have a Hebel World War I flare gun. What's interesting about this one is that this one was left behind in this town in the Second World War. So um, it was used again in the Second World War and left behind right here. So. That's an interesting piece of history and really special for me because it came from right here. So it's interesting to see that they decided to saw a piece of the barrel off right there to make it shorter and place some nails inside of it for some reason. Here you can see some more of the original rounds. Even has the starter tap. And um, this one over here is even more interesting. You're probably wondering why, because the condition is not as good as that one. Well, this one has very high historical value. Why? Because this one comes from Utah Beach, 100%. There are actually pictures of this being found. It comes from a bunker at Utah Beach. I know exactly which bunker it comes from. Uh, it was found together with an MG and a lot of these belts were found right there in this bunker. And uh, my friend Mark had the opportunity to buy it and he sold it again to me and now it's in my collection. So this is an original piece of D-Day history right here from Utah Beach. This is a witness from D-Day. Right here we have some more clips for the STG 44. They are so weird. They're like Mauser rounds, but small. It's really funny, and as you can see, they're deactivated, scary looking rounds. Right here, we actually have some Mannlicher shell casings, and look at this in the back. Look at there, all the way in the bottom. You see that? There's a tiny eagle with a swastika right there. They really loved marking things. By the way, all this stuff is displayed on an original German World War II Zeltbahn or Tenthof. We have a bag here, we have an oiler for the MG. A uh, screwdriver, not just a normal screwdriver, but actually a World War II German screwdriver. It's even marked. So <laughs> it's not just an ordinary screwdriver. Tool pouch for the MG. Uh, cleaning kit. We have an MG box right here. We have another drum magazine, 20 millimeter flak shell casing and round. Obviously this one is also deactivated. You can see it's hollow. If you find something like this, don't play with it because this will totally blow your hand off if it's still life. We have some German goggles right here, some casings for the flare gun, aluminum. Above this, we have a Volksempfänger. Uh, this is a German radio 
and as you can see right there that's a clear indication that it is pretty german this one is still completely in working order i'm not going to try it out because i don't want to blow anything up but it's in, in great condition. It has all the markings on the back and on the inside. Everything is still completely untouched. Meine Berliner Volksgenossen und Volksgenossinnen. Am vergangenen Sonntag begannen die Bolschewisten ihre Großoffensive an der Oderfront. Berlin ist ihr Ziel. So very, very nice German World War II radio. Right next to it we have a field telephone German as well second world war also great condition very heavy sometimes i'm scared that this is gonna fall a very very heavy german field telephone or field radio and then we have lots and lots of relics i'm not getting into all the relics right now because it's just way too much but as you can see lots of german helmets dog tags uh exploded rifles bayonets lids from ammunition boxes mess tins axes, grenade launcher sights, um, just a lot of stuff laying around here. Yeah, that day that I found 46 helmets in one hole. Some more posters above it, barbed wire poles and stuff, shovel with a piece of shrapnel going through. Very nasty German barbed wire, look at that. Very thick, very hard to cut. Uh, more relics actually right here, especially this relic right there is very, very special to me. And I'm talking about that one. This is a, a 50 cal round. It's of course empty right now. That particular relic started my hobby. I remember it very well. I was on vacation in Germany. I'm not gonna say where, but there was uh, like a camping area uh, near a river and we had our tent right next to the river and um, I was I was really small I was a little kid I also remember that my dad had his drinks in the river to keep them cool and um, The river just took them away. So we were going down the river to get them I remember I was there with my brother for some reason. I was mad and I kicked the wall and I remember this this one just rolling down and landing at my feet it just came down at my feet and I picked it up and I was like what is this and I showed it to my dad and he was like that's a bullet that's that that's a bullet from the war and I was like what is that you know I didn't I didn't know anything about it I started looking for more uh, and I found buckles even a piece of a helmet net um, things that I'm like oh man that's really interesting I would love to go back there right now but I found these American push buttons more 30-06 shell casings just a lot of very interesting stuff was found there it was in the Ardennes and you know there was there was heavy fighting there and um, I didn't know that as a kid obviously so but that is what got me interested in history and I took this I took this one with me we started cleaning it right there in the toilets and all this powder was was falling out and of course as a little kid you wanted to see what it does and my dad burned a little bit of the powder and it was like pew, flying away and you know it was really interesting to me yeah that's basically how it all started this is where i am right now because of this for others this is just a simple um 50 cal round which is even broken for me it's the start of my hobby so i'm gonna keep this one forever so yeah, uh, let's continue. There is more stuff right there. We have a tail from a mortar right there. Some practice rounds, German practice rounds. Lots of shell casings. Gas mask canister with gas mask. Messed in. Uh, here we have a Flugabwehrkanone 88 shell casing or Flak 88. Very famous, obviously. And on top of it is a German paratrooper helmet. This is not a real paratrooper helmet. This is actually a replica. And I painted it like this myself. I used this for reenactment. Let's back up a little bit so I can give you a better look at this display. Right here we have a backpack, paratrooper bandolier, paratrooper dog tag. It's actually on top of a ammo box for stick grenades. Right here we have some more stuff, goggles, glasses, another dog tag. This is an original World War II bunker stool. Got that from the owner from the Eyewitness Museum. Was there in the museum for quite a long time. Here we have some schnuchschuhe, some paratrooper boots. Yeah, right here we have this guy. He is holding a sick grenade and he's holding a piece of captured American parachute. Why? I don't know. Maybe he wants to camouflage his helmet or something. But he, as you can probably already tell, is an SS soldier. He's wearing the Dot 44 uniform. First, I had my original wool tunic on this guy, but 
The mods really liked it, so I decided to take my original uniform away and put it in a plastic bag to hide it. Uh, it's actually downstairs right now, so I'm not going to show you that right now because it's in plastic bags and stuff like that because I don't want it to get damaged. So I decided to put a HBT uniform on this soldier. But as you can see, it's an SS impression, has his cap right there. Um, equipment is all original right here. Original Mauser pouches and original Y strap as well. The other side we can see a nice worn Kochkische 31 and M31 bread bag. This helmet shell is original, M42, restored by me. First this guy was actually holding the Mauser K98K but I decided it was nicer to hang that one on the wall so I just gave him a stick grenade instead. He's wearing original boots. Found those in a store for 20 euros. Lucky me once again. <laughs> Here we have a nice sign which is saying Oh, what happened to the plane? Here we go. She's saying Hindenburgstrasse. What the? Why is the plane moving? This sign actually came from Aachen, bought it a while back. Someone was selling this sign for another very cheap price and I was very, very happy that I could buy it. Um, very nice piece of history. This is a World War II period sign and during that time the Gestapo headquarters was located right there. So this sign came from that place. So that's pretty interesting. Of course, in Aachen there was heavy fighting and I'm pretty sure this right there is all war damage and then it was taken at some point. Then we're gonna look down right here. We can see another Zeltbahn with a lot of stuff on top of it. We have some barrel protection caps for German machine guns, some uh, shell casings. I found these all with a metal detector. Um, these were all fired by the MG42. How do I know? Well, because of this. Typical MG42 shell casings have this damage on the top. You see that? Half moon. This is typical MG42. They all have that. They were ejected with so much force that the top of the shell casing bent like that. So if you find a shell casing with this, or a lot of them like this, then it's uh, MG42. Also, they always have this damage right there on the bottom. So because of that, you can tell that these were fired by the famous MG42. Talking about the MG42, here we have an MG42. Original MG42. Uh, <laughs> this one got damaged during a reenactment in Belgium by a bunch of idiots. I got a video about that, so if you want to see that, be sure to take a look at that. I still need to get it repaired. I didn't have the time for it so far. I know some guys from a gun store and I asked them about it and they said they could probably fix it. So yeah, that's good. But still, I really, really, I'm so pissed at these guys. I really, really wish that they will drive over their own equipment or something. That would be so amazing. Anyway, uh, <laughs> here we have some more original rounds laying on top of some ammo boxes. Uh, we have some belts. These are original MP40 belts that I bought for an extremely insane price at the Cine Military Affair a while back. Here we have a World War II PPSH, obviously Russian. Also, the Germans really liked the PPSH. Uh, they even converted them to 9mm. They were also used on the Western Front. Not so much, obviously, as you see in some stupid games, but um, they were, in fact, used. But this, like I said already, is an original PPSH from the Second World War. Here we have some fired Tokarev rounds. So that's nice. Uh, some clips. Uh, another bayonet in mint condition. And we're not done yet. Here we have another original MG42 from the Second World War. So it's not an MG53, it's an MG 42 so you can see right there and this one is not damaged um, some more original rounds and here we have a Laufschützer there would be a spare barrel inside of that if the barrel got damaged or got really hot you could just poop, switch it really quick with another one here we have an FN Browning pistol it's a Belgian pistol. These pistols were also used by the Dutch army but this one was actually produced during the war for the Germans. It even has German eagle stamps on it. Of course, right next to it, we have the famous MP40. This is an original MP40 from 1941. Matching numbers. Yeah, just iconic, very, very iconic. Love the MP40. There you can see the marking. What I like about this one, first of all, you know, it's matching numbers, um, but it's in very nice used condition. You can see it's almost like silver colored. So it was used a lot. A very nice 
German World War II MP40. Right behind the MG42 we have another machine gun. This is the ZB30. Yes, I know it looks a lot like the Bren gun, but it's not. Uh, this one was actually made before the Bren gun. Um, it's a ZB30, like I said. It's a uh, Czechoslovakian machine gun. And um, during the invasion of Czechoslovakia, the Germans actually captured these machine guns and these were used a lot by the Waffen-SS especially. Because back at the time, the SS was not an official part of the German army, so they did not have access to the, you know, standard German army weaponry and stuff like that. So they used a lot of captured stuff, for instance, like this one. So these machine guns were used a lot by the Waffen-SS and it was actually perfect for them because it's the same ammunition as they already used. 8mm Mauser. A very, very nice looking machine gun. I actually found magazines from a ZB30 on a Waffen SS location before, together with a gas mask. Actually, over there you can see it. This is one of them. I found that on an SS position. So, yeah, a very nice looking machine gun. Um, let me turn around. Um, let me actually go here first. We have a nice American jacket right here. Still has a laundry number inside. Here we have a few World War One things. Nice trench art right here. Look at this. This is all done by hand. Can you imagine the work? Here we have some personal things. This is all from one person except the Mein Kampf, which we have there, and the Adolf Hitler book right there. Um, but this is all from a killed soldier. It says Gefallen für Groß Deutschland. It also contains a letter that was written to his wife informing her that he was killed. He was killed by a shell fragment in the face. He was left behind on the battlefield. Oh my god, why does it scare me so much? Oh, <gasps> that scared me. <laughs> here we have some World War II bottles that I found in foxholes and stuff. Here we go down here. We have some more stuff. You can see a nice plate. Once again, marked with the German Eagle. A lot of personal things, some cards, some papers. And right here we have some V1 rocket parts. These are some little pieces of the cooling system from a V1 rocket. And this is from the tail from a V1 rocket. It has a word on it that says Nicht anfassen, which means do not touch. So these are pieces from the V1 rocket. Can you imagine? Secret German weapon. And here it is. I actually have more of it. What the? What's going on? Anyway, <laughs> I even have more of those pieces, but like I already said before, I cannot display everything, so. Um, let's go over here. We have <laughs> some shell casings all the way in the top. Um, we have some fuses, gas mask canisters. Yeah, I found these huge bottles on the bottom of a foxhole that was so amazing. They're all complete. Really, really cool. Uh, here we have some of the German helmets that I found. Four paratrooper helmets. These are all from killed German soldiers. As you can see, that is pretty nasty right there. But these are paratrooper helmets, extremely rare to find. This is a World War I helmet, M16, used again in the Second World War. And the interesting thing here is also uh, that one of the split pins actually broke and the soldier decided to use a uniform hook to keep the liner in place. So that is pretty interesting. The soldier got shot in the back of the head and then there's the exit. That is really, really nasty. There's just no way to describe the feeling when you find something like this. This one is still in pretty good condition, as you can see. Some coins, some bracelets, and we go down. Right here, we have some German helmets. So these are the so-called square dip helmets, M34. This one has the decals for Feuerschutzpolizei. Uh, these helmets were used by the fire department, the police, but some even were used by the SS as parade helmets and stuff like that. But like I said, this one is Feuerschutzpolizei. Uh, this one actually has four decals for some reason. So I got reissued a few times. I don't know exactly what kind of decals they are because it's under the paint. So some nice original German World War II helmets. Helmets like these were also used by the Luftschutz. Talking about Luftschutz, here we have an M42. Luftschutz beaded helmet. Underneath that we have the Gladiator model Luftschutz and underneath that we have another beaded M42. This is what a Luftschutz belt buckle looks like. Hinterhilfe right there. This one is really nice as well. This is an original German World War II lightweight helmet. Very interesting model. It looks very strange. These were used for parades but also by the police and the SS. Just a lightweight steel 
helmet. Right here we have a Luftschutz gas mask uh, with the original box. Here we have an armband, Hitler Youth. This book is interesting because of the stamp. Let me show you. Here we go. Reichschule für Jungen. So this came from the library of the German elite school. Very interesting book. If we go lower, we have some Dutch stuff. We have some newspapers. This newspaper is from the 10th of May, 1940, saying Nederland in oorlog met Duitsland, which means the Netherlands in war with Germany. Here we have some more newspapers. This is from the 11th of May, 1940. And here again, May 1940. It's all about the uh, the German invasion of the Netherlands. It's very, very interesting to read. Can you imagine during that time reading these newspapers? Really, really scary. We have some Dutch helmets and some more personal stuff. This is from my mother's grandpa. Um, he actually worked for the Germans. This is also his paper right there. You can see the eagle with the swastika on it right there. So no one in the Netherlands was allowed to go outside after eight. He was allowed to go outside after eight because, you know, he had to work for the Germans. He worked for the NS or the Dutch railways. So he was allowed to actually go outside and do his work. So that's pretty interesting. Right here we have some aircraft parts, including a complete window from a crashed bomber. The crew died and these are some of the pieces of this crash. Some more display cabinets right here. First, let me go here. Here we have a very rare model German helmet. It's like an M16, but it's not. It's it's like the uh, Himmler model again, and it's black as well, so it might be uh, Allgemeine SS. Very interesting German helmet resting on top of a shell casing. Houten Giftungsmittel, uh, some shell casings, a lot of shell casings, some more Mestins. Oh, this is pretty interesting. This is an ashtray made from a big shell casing and a 50 cal shell casing. Look at this. The shell casing is marked 1944 and we can actually screw this off all the way like this and then we can see that this one is marked 1942. It's really funny to see what people did with items like this. Really creative. We got some very interesting pieces of stone including a piece of the Berlin wall. More shell casings and we have some Dutch helmets right there. And here we have a World War One M16 helmet. This is an original German World War One M16 helmet. Has been restored by me, but a beautiful original shell. Um, right here we have a dog tag from a soldier who was killed in 1944. He was only 21 years old. His name is Benny Bob Bellamy. And there is the certificate because we adopted his grave. He was a soldier in the 99th Infantry Division, Regiment 395 was killed in December 10, 1944. He is buried on the American War Cemetery in Henry Chapel in Belgium. Uh, plot A, row 10, grave number one. We had contact with the family and stuff like that. And um, here is his dog tag. And this flag right here is actually an original World War II grave flag. This is what they put next to the graves. More shell casings, buttons, stuff like that, and some sand from Omaha Beach. Uh, that actually is a German toothbrush, uh, but I always use that one for reenacting, so... And if I don't use it, I just put it in the display cabinet like this. Right there we have a shaving brush, we have razors, um, we have some tape right there. Yep, that is US World War II tape. And, oh wait, let me show you this. I found this one myself with a metal detector. Actually in the same location where I found the dock tech, but wow. Look at the condition after so many years under the ground. The quality of these American awards is really good. Some medical things, some coins, some buttons. Here we have a mess in with some rations that I found. Field bottle with alcohol, canteen cup, pieces of parachute, really, really great condition. Here we have an original P38 can opener and we go down. We have this French seam M1 helmet signed by veterans. We have some pretty famous names on there. Right there we have an unused US World War II dock tech chain, some coins, another piece of parachute right here. Here we have some Pacific stuff, some Japanese, some really, really interesting stuff. Now let's go to the second over here. We have this beautiful front seam M1 helmet and the liner is in absolutely fantastic condition. Really, really, really nice. 
Right there we have a TNT block. It's not actually a TNT block, it's a piece of wood, but it's interesting because it's a movie prop from the series Band of Brothers. If you're hungry for some chocolate, you can get some right here because this right here is original World War II US chocolate. Some coins, some money, and right here, this liner is really, really awesome. Uh, this is a liner from the Old Hickory Division, Regiment 120. On the other side, there's actually a uh, regiment uh, decal. The interesting thing is that this regiment um, liberated this town and that makes it very, very interesting. You can see actually there was a decal applied before this one underneath that one. So this liner is in very, very nice use condition. Underneath that, we have a helmet, which is signed also by veterans, including the Old Hickory Division. More coins, more stuff. If we go down, we see actually another grenade launcher site right there in mint condition. Again, we have some 50 cal shell casings, food powder, radio stuff, interesting newspaper right here. Street battles raging inside blazing Berlin. Soviet troops four miles away from Unter den Linde. Monday, April 23rd, 1945. So on April 30, Hitler would commit suicide. Right here, we have an American flag helmet another canteen, fork, spoon, knife, and three shell casings, 50 cal. Here we have a nice original US World War II period American flag, 48 stars. Got this in the fan mail actually. A very, very nice flag. And underneath it we have a little display, like it's, you know, 1945 and all the German equipment got just thrown away. That's what I'm trying to show here, like all the stuff got just dumped here. Uh, we have a piece of a bunker, license plate. We have, of course, this guy right there. We don't need him anymore. We're gonna throw it away. Ranks, insignias, uh, bayonet, viapas, helmets, lots of helmets right there. Flag, obviously, armband, like the Germans surrendered and they just piled up all the stuff. Then we're gonna take a look at this guy. He is wearing an M42 helmet and a gas mask. He has Mauser pouches, Y strap. He has a flashlight, sick grenade, Another Mauser pouch right there. He has an officer's belt, an aluminum MG box. And if we take a look in the back. He has a backpack with a Kochgeschirr 31. Right here he has his fuel bottle and 31 bread bag and a scabbard for a bayonet. Apparently this guy lost his bayonet. Oh, I found it, I think, there it is. Found your bayonet. By the way, uh, this is all original. This is a very nice original jacket. Um, as you can see, uh, this was too short, so they decided to make it a little longer. This is a very, very nice jacket. It's actually reversible, and the inside has winter camouflage. This jacket actually has blood on the inside. He also has a very interesting button right there. I cannot show you that right now because it's underneath the belt, but one of the buttons has an Edelweiss flower on it, so that's pretty interesting. But yeah, nice original um, uniform. and. Right here, I actually completely forgot this little area. We have some more stuff over here. We have a holster for the Luger PO8, another bayonet, dock tag, belt buckles, pouches, belts, backpack, another cap. Oh, this is actually interesting. This is a camouflage cover for a German helmet made from Italian camouflage material. Now uh, let me go this way. All right, here we have a 20 millimeter flak gun. I found this with a metal detector uh, years ago. I actually got a video of that. I, that was a very, very unexpected find. Obviously, you don't find a flak gun every day, but I found a flak gun. It has Normandy camouflage. Managed to put it inside the car and here it is. And I can tell you, this thing is heavy. But you see, it exploded right there. Really, really interesting piece of history. Yeah, a flag on. Uh, we have some Dutch helmets. I cleaned this one and these helmets were actually used by the resistance. This one is saying KP, which means Knokploeg. That is really, you cannot really see it right now. But this is also a very rare model. This is an M42 Dutch helmet model. Um, so it was produced during the German occupation in the Netherlands. It has a very sharp edge. Uh, it doesn't have a rolled edge. Very interesting Dutch helmet produced during the German occupation. Here we have the duffel bag from my great grandpa. He fought against the Germans during the Second World War. He was on a pretty famous ship called the Isaac Sveers. The ship sunk in 1942 by the U-boat 431 under command of Captain Wilhelm Domes. He was actually one of the few survivors. He was really deaf after the war because of the blasts of the torpedo. These are also from him. He was a real hero. So when the Germans invaded the Netherlands, 
he went to England to fight against the Germans. This helmet though has nothing to do with him. This is a Dutch World War II helmet. This was a Dutch green army helmet with the um, line on the front right there. But the Germans decided to use this helmet painted black and apply decals, but the decals have been removed, as you can see. This was actually a captured Dutch helmet. Right here, I have the boots of my great grandpa as well. I have some of his medals here too. Has some information right there. Got some more of his medals right there, but I don't really have a space to display it at this point. So that's why I'm keeping it right here. Very, very proud that I have these things in my collection. Some more things on the wall. We have some Edelweiss flowers. Italian field bottle, World War I, German mess tin, some dog tags, another mess tin, some papers, pictures, letters. And right there we have a World War II record. I actually have a lot of these records, but you know, that's something that's just hard to display, so I got them in boxes. Sorry about the lighting right here. Seems like I need some new batteries, but we got some boots and some more equipment, some shell casings, another bread bag. A lot of stuff in there, cannot really show you right now. Here we have a World War I bread bag, binoculars, some more very big shell casings. Let me go back this way. Oh, here we have a siren, by the way. You've probably seen the siren before. I don't want to scare the whole neighborhood, so this is enough. But yeah, this was basically a quick look at my collection, because like I already said, it's, it's very hard to get into all the small details and you know it's it, if i would do that it would take a thousand years for me to finally complete this video but this is the way my collection uh is displayed at this moment stuff is changing all the time but you know there are so many things that i would love to change or would play somewhere else but I just don't have the space for it. So I have lots of things inside boxes and stuff like that. I'm just waiting for the, the time that I have enough space to display even more. So yeah, but this is my collector's room at this point, And I really, really hope you enjoyed this little tour. But yeah, this is going to be the end of my collection tour. If you did like the video, please leave a like and a comment. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and subscribe if you want to see more videos. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.